Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can decouple your views so you can reuse them in the future. Let's take a look at this very simple example. We have a list inside our content view. The list simply displays, as you can imagine, a list. And if I go ahead and run the application right now, I can tap on any of these items. It goes to the details view, which simply displays these selected items. I can go back and forth, and it works. Now, the question is that if I want to display this particular list again in a completely separate view, how would I do that? Well, I most probably have to copy this code and paste it over there. And that's how I will do it, right? So that's copy pasting, duplicate code. This means that in the future, if you have to modify at one place, you have to modify in all the other places. Pretty bad. So let's see how we can accomplish this. I'm going to go ahead and add, let's go ahead and delete this one first. I'm going to go ahead and add over here a new view, a surf UI view. Let's go ahead and call it customer list view because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to display a list of customers. Okay, there we go. Now, inside the customer list view, we want to display a list of customers. So somebody needs to pass in the customers. Customers, which is strength. Now, in your case, depending on the compl complexity of your app, most probably a list of customers will be a list of models, meaning you will have a customer object or customer view model and things like that. We're not going to go that complicated. We're just going to make it simple so that customers is just simply a name for customers like Alex, Mary, John, Jack, whatever. Now I need to update this part also so that I can go ahead and pass in the list of customers. So I'm just going to go ahead and say John and Alex and Mary, because now I have to pass in a customer's parameters because I have declared it right over here. With this, I can go back to my content view and I can pretty much copy this code and go to the customer list and paste it over here. Let's go ahead and uh, resume this so that we can see that what kind of a view is built. And you can see it displays all the names. Okay, that's great. Let's go ahead and start using the customer list view in our content view. So instead of this part, I'm going to go ahead and simply say customer list view, the one that we just created. And I have to pass in the customers. Well, luckily, I have already have the customer on line number 16. So I can simply go ahead and pass in the customers. And if I go ahead and run the application right now, Let's see, let's go ahead and first uh, build it again. There we go. And we'll go ahead and run it. And it works as expected. I mean, it goes to the detail view and everything. The detail view is implemented right over here. It simply takes in the name of the customer and displays the customer. Now this is all fine. But what about that if I do want to display a list of customer, but I don't always want to go to the detail view. Hmm, this becomes a little bit more interesting that if I don't want to go to the detail view. So now what we have actually done is that we have definitely separated out displaying a list of customers. We have put that in customer list view, but customer list view now knows a lot more what it's not supposed to. Basically customer list view is also responsible for performing the navigation. And if the customer list view is performing the navigation, it will always go to the detail view because that's what I hard coded right over here. But maybe I don't want to go to detail view. Maybe I want to go to some other view. So how can we accomplish this? Well, the first thing what we will do is we will remove the navigation part. The customer list view is just interested and just responsible for displaying a list of customers, it should not be responsible for performing 
the actual navigation. Removing this is pretty simple. We'll just remove the navigation link and I'll simply replace it with a text. Now, if you go back to the content view, you will be able to see that, well, I can't really navigate. If I tap on any of these items, I won't be able to navigate. So how do we fix this problem? So let's go ahead and see that how I can go ahead and add something, some feature to the customer list view that will allow us to perform that kind of navigation. Okay, so the thing that we want to do is that the customer list view will be displaying the customers. And whenever you tap on a particular customer, the customer list view is going to give you that particular selected customer. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the customer list view. And I know that we are passing in a list of customers, but I also want to pass in another, a closure, which is on selected. And this is going to give you the name of the customer, the selected customer. It's not going to return anything. And this is optional, meaning you can pass in on selected like something, or you can ignore it. Now, in order to ignore it, I do need to provide some sort of initial value or a default value. I can go ahead and create a initializer where I can say that, well, I'm not going to be passing any value. So if you don't pass any value, it will be reset or it will be default to nil. Now, you might be wondering that, okay, hold on, why would somebody not pass on selected? I mean, don't they want to get the selected customer? Well, not always. Not always that they want to get the selected customer. Sometimes they just want to display a list. So in those cases, they just don't want to get the customer. They just want to display a list of customers. That's it. No detail, no navigation, nothing. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and implement this. So the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this text inside a horizontal stack. And the reason that I'm doing that is that right now you can only tap on this particular word, John. I want to tap on the whole thing, the whole row. So I'm going to put it inside the navigator. I mean, the edge stack, I'm going to put, add a spacer. And I'm going to set the content shape to be a rectangle. So that we can tap on this empty portion, which is right here. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do? Well, whenever somebody taps on this row, we want to fire the on tap gesture. And whenever we perform on tap gesture, we want to call on selected and pass in the selected name of the customer or the selected customer. Now this is not really going to work because on selected is a and an optional so we have to unwrap it before we start using it so if let on selected equals to on selected we're just going to unwrap it and then we can call on selected with the name of the customer all right so this means that whenever you tap on a cell it's going to call on selected and it's going to give you the customer now let's go ahead and try to use this from our content view. So this is our content view. You can see that the content view is not passing the on selected field. So we can actually go ahead and use a trailing closure. We will get the customer. And once we get the customer, we can assign it to a selected customer field. A selected customer is declared right over here and it is marked with state. So this means that whenever you select a customer, it is going to, uh, you know, build, call the build function again, hence the whole rendering will take place again. But if I simply go ahead and print the customer over here, you will see that whatever the customer I'm tapping on, using the customer list view, we get the customer and we will be able to print it on the terminal. So let's go ahead and see it. I'm going to run it on an actual simulator so that we should be able to see 
the tap happening. Let's go ahead and resize this a little bit. Okay, and right on the uh, on the console, you can see Alex, Mary, John. You can see that it is happening correctly. All right, so that's working perfectly fine. Great. So now what we want to do is whenever you select a customer, you want to perform navigation. So I'm going to go ahead and say if let selected customer equals to selected customer, go ahead and unwrap it because it is an optional. Then go ahead and perform a navigation link where you will pass in a couple of different things. In this case, you will pass in the destination. Destination obviously is detail view. So I'm just going to pass in detail view with the customer, which is the selected customer, which is a string, which is also unwrapped. The constant value over here will be just constant true because we just want to show it. And for the label, we don't really want to do anything with the label. So I'm just going to pass in an empty view. All right. Let's go ahead and build it again. And I'm going to go ahead and see that if we can perform the navigation or not. So I'm going to say Alex. But now if I go, the, the first time the navigation actually happens, but if I click on Mary, you can see it's not happening. So if I go ahead and run it again, it works correctly for Mary, but now it doesn't work for John. And the other thing you will notice is that we don't really see any detailed disclosures over here on the right hand side, the chevron is not getting displayed. So we need to do all of those things ourselves. Now the, let's go ahead and fix the first problem that why does the navigation does not happen again? And the reason is that we need to reset our selected customer. In order to reset our customer, I am going to go and I'm just going to make sure that we are resetting it somewhere. So let's go ahead and say, right after that is okay. So I'm just going to say on appear. And I'm just going to go ahead and see reset it to nil. Now let's go ahead and run it again. Alex, Mary, John. Awesome. So it's working again. So now we can go ahead and start working on this chevron. Why is, are these chevrons not displaying the detailed disclosure? Well, since you're not using the navigation link the way that Swift UI was advocating that you use it, since we're doing all of this kind of like dynamically, you don't get to get the navigation links. So let's go ahead, I mean, the detailed disclosure. So let's go ahead and see how we can add the detailed disclosure. So we only want to add detailed disclosure if the on selected is not nil. So we can actually do something over here. I can say if on selected is not equal to nil, then I can go ahead and say image and I can use the system name and I can go ahead and say chevron dot right. So this is going to go ahead and display a chevron. After adding this particular if check where we are saying that if the on selected is not nil, then go ahead and display the image. So let's go ahead and run it again now. So I'm going to go back to the content view and now you can see that the chevrons are back. Awesome, right? Now we can go ahead and run it. And the chevrons are displaying. That's perfectly fine. Now note one thing that if I go over here, right over here in the caller, and if I create another customer list view, which is just to display a list and not navigation, then what happens? So let me go ahead and write it over here. Just for display customer list view and I can go ahead and pass in the customers just the customers I'm not attaching the on tapped or on selected I'm not doing that so you can see that they are very different this one I can't really go anywhere this is only for display purposes and this one also does not have any chevrons or detailed disclosure on the other hand, the top one does have chevrons and you can tap and go to different place. Now, I know that this is a lot of code to perform a really basic action, but this is for kind of like the long term of your project. Meaning 
that if you are building big projects in which you want to use customer list view or customer view or some sort of uh, controls and widgets, you want to use them and not directly or tightly couple them with the navigation, then this approach you can definitely use. Um, I've also done a video tutorial on how you can create and configure routing in SIF UI. Uh, so I'm going to also add a link to that particular video because that will be really helpful if you're trying to create a system where everything is modular and not tightly coupled. Now you can see that the customer list view is only responsible for displaying the customers and you can get access to the selected customer, but it does not really perform the navigation. The navigation part is still up to the caller, the content view. And if I want to navigate to the detail view, then I can navigate to the detail view. If I want to navigate to a customer selected whatever insurance view, then I can do that. So this is a much more reusable solution as compared to performing the actual navigation inside the customer list view. So hope you like this. I know it's a little bit more code to achieve uh, same result, but this code is more modular. This code is uh, not as tightly coupled as previous code. And uh, if you're building larger application, this is how you create, uh, you know, loosely coupled applications with reusable controls. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out the links in the YouTube description. You will find a Patreon link. You can become a patron. That will help me a lot to produce the high quality video that you're looking at. Um, you can also go ahead and purchase my courses on Udemy. And I have a brand new course, which is Writing Clean Code, which was released only a couple of weeks ago. So make sure to check that one out. But if you want to learn SIF UI, I have the best and the most comprehensive course on SIF UI, which is 21 plus hours long. Apart from that, I have courses on Rx Swift, MVVM design pattern, uh, SIF UI with uh, Firebase, which is an amazing course also. So definitely check it out. If you're doing anything with SIF UI and Firebase, this is the course for you. Uh, so check out all of my courses and thank you so much for your support. Share the links, uh, become a subscriber. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.